Dendrite, Soma, Nucleus, Myelin Sheath, Schwann Cell, Notoran VA, Axon Terminal, Dendrite, Soma, Nucleus, Myelin Sheath, Schwann Cell, Notoran VA, Axon Terminal, Dendrite, Soma, Nucleus, Myelin Sheath, Schwann Cell, Notoran VA, Axon Terminal, Dendrite, Soma, Nucleus, Myelin Sheath, Schwann Cell, Dendrite, Dendrite. Fuck, what did I just do? Fuck. Uh, uh, let me let me fix this. Let me fix this. Mm -mm. Uh, dendrite axon terminal. Dendrite axon terminal. Dendrite axon terminal. Dendrite axon. Dendrite axon. Dendrite axon. <sighs> Fuck. What did I just do? Who did I just make? I never, I never signed up for this. I never signed up to be the programmer of people. Why did I? Why did? Why? Why does it have to be my fault? Maybe this one's okay. Maybe, maybe it's nothing too judgmental. Let's see who this is, let's see who this is gonna be. <clears throat> Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer. He's going to be born on May 21st, 1960 in Milwaukee to a loving family of teachers and will have a younger brother. Okay. Seems okay so far. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. He's going to be neglected as a child and begin to take an interest in dead animals and will collect animal carcasses from the roadside. In one instance, Dahmer will decapitate the carcass of a dog before nailing the body to a tree and impaling the skull on a stake beside a wooden cross in the woods near his house. Oh no. No, not again. Dahmer will commit his first murder in 1978 and will eventually lead to the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys. His later murders will involve necrophilia, cannibalism, and the permanent preservation of body parts. He will later be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder Schizotypal personality disorder and a psychotic disorder. No. No, no, no. Oh, no. No, no. Oh, no, no. First John Christie, Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and now Jeffrey Dahmer. I didn't mean to do this. I really didn't mean to do this. Please, please don't let this happen, please. Why does it have to be me? God, why, why do these people have to live? Why can't they just be normal? Why can't I be normal? Why, why can't they die?
what if I can end it? What if I, I can end the cycle? I heard some of the other builders do this. If I cut exactly at every axon and dendrite meeting, their brain will cease to function and then they won't have the capacity to remember to breathe and then they will... I can't. I can't. I can't. I will just be like them. I don't want to be like them. I don't want to be who I... create. Just know... It's not my fault. I don't mean for this to happen. Sometimes I just get carried away. We all get carried away. It's natural. It's natural to make mistakes. Why do I keep making this one? I don't want to make killers. I want to make good people. Dendrite, Selma, Nucleus, Smile and Sheath, Schwann, Cell, Node, Ranvier, Axon, Terminal, Dendrite, Soma, Nucleus, Smile and Sheath, Schwann, Cell, Dendrite, Dendrite. Gary Ridgway. Dendrite, Selma, Nucleus, Smile and Sheath, Schwann, Cell, Node, Ranvier, Axon, Terminal, Dendrite, Soma, Nucleus, Smile and Sheath, Schwann, Cell, Dendrite, Dendrite. Richard Ramirez. David Parker Dendrite. Ray, Ed Keen, Dendrite. Aileen Dendrite. Warnos, Dendrite. Joseph Nasso, Rodney Dendrite. Alcala, <laughs> Dendrite. Charles Manson, Dendrite. Dendrite. I believe the only way to reform people is to kill them. I mean, everything is shit. It's just, it's just easy to be shit. And we don't have any energy you have to exert. Everything ends up being shit. You know, after a while, you just keep thinking that things will get better. Well, I'll get some rest. But you pass out at three in the morning and then wake up at three in the evening have your coffee at 3.15, it's just, your day is already over. Why even make coffee? What's the point? I mean, why even get up? You know it's a shit day, it's been a shit week, it's been a shit month, it's, it's been a fucking shit year. I just stay in bed. God, you are really, really putting me through it this year. I mean, there's only so much I can take. Now, you can wish your son a very Happy birthday for me. I'm sorry I didn't have a Christmas card this year. I don't really have anyone left to make it. <laughs> Shit! But the crazy thing about life is that you still feel things, even when you think you can't. <laughs> even when you feel worthless and you're just so sad you can't stop crying. I mean, you can still feel like shit. Believe me, I've, I've 
felt like shit for a while now. Hmm. It's always difficult this time of the year. Christmas, the holidays. I mean, when you're younger, Christmas feels like everything. The lights shine brighter, the trees look bigger. We have Santa, Christmas, Santa coming down the chimney, presents. Now it just makes me sad. It just reminds me of, you know, what if? Ah, I mean, that's why every year I think of. All the things you took for granted, and you're left alone. You're stuck in a rut. that is a thousand feet deep and you're stuck there with no one but yourself and you have no climbing gear and it wouldn't do you any use anyways because you're just so tired. You don't even have the energy to get out. So you stay there and you figure that's all you can do. So each day facing the next one, the seasons continue to change. The pit just feels the same. No rescue, no one is there to help you. And you would ask for help because this pit is so fucking deep that if someone tried to come and rescue you, they would just never find their way out. The pit is just too deep. And that's what you think of while you're in the hole. And how you even made it there in the first place. Then you remember, and you're, you're glad you're in the hole because moving forward doesn't seem like an option. I know you never cared about how I looked or how I dressed, but I hope you can see me today. I'm trying for you. Everyone seems to die around Christmas time. I think Santa Claus and the Grim Reaper go hand in hand. I, I used to play checkers with my grandmother this time of the year, but I've forgotten how to play now. We'd always spend Christmas at her house, my dad and I. She decorated for Christmas better than anyone, anyone I know. I mean, her Christmas tree was amazing. She always had the fireplace burning. <laughs> Elves that were constantly moving and nutcrackers everywhere. Oh my gosh. And then on Christmas Eve, we'd always make cookies. I don't know what she put in those cookies, but they always turned out amazing. <laughs> we eat almost all of them when they were still hot and melting, but we would, we'd always save some for Santa. And now I never understood why breaking into someone's house would allow them to get Christmas cookies, but since Santa was my dad, I I thought it was okay. <laughs> this one Christmas, um, my grandmother passed away. Now she died on the 26th, so it was after Christmas, but to me, Christmas takes place the entire month of December. I think she wanted to spend her last Christmas with us. It's always a really special time that we share together. <laughs> she died in her bed. And my dad was holding her hand. Just like I held his. Sorry about the flowers. That thing's open on Christmas, you know, so. And they're a couple days old. I know you don't mind though. You can see me right now, I hope you're proud of me. It's been a tough year and I, <laughs> I haven't really done anything impressive, so. But I hope next year will be better. <laughs> I made a gingerbread house last night. It was <laughs> just like how we used to make them. You know, the houses that would only stand for a couple minutes before they just fell apart. <laughs> Thanks for making Christmas special. 
it's hard being in the house without you, but um, I'm, I'm saving up for an apartment. You know, if I can, if I can sell the house, then I, I think I'll be in good shape. I don't know when I'll be back, but hopefully your birthday. It's not easy coming here, but it's always good to talk to you. I miss you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I'm all unpacked. Oh, house tour time. Okay, I've got the living room all set. Oh, my library's over here, organized by author A to... I guess I packed them by title. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, anyways, here's the living room. Doesn't the couch look so good? I'd be told it'd be the perfect size. Okay, we're gonna go to the kitchen now. I've got my little coffee set up here or I, it's there i guess i'm still getting used to the setup but i just stocked my fridge full of food i'm like a real grown-up or something that degree's paying off i guess now here's the dining room yay and now to my room <laughs> and Voila! Here it is. All my stuff perfectly packed away. I even made the bed just for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I know once I get really settled in, it'll all feel better, but I mean, you just saw I haven't found my bearings. <laughs> I'm just not used to the place, I guess. <laughs> hey! Yeah, I'm all unpacked. House tour time. Uh, I've got the living room all set. My library's over here. It's organized by author A to, I guess I organize them by title. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, anyway, here's the living room. It, doesn't the couch look so good? I told it would be the perfect size. We're going to the kitchen now. I've got my little coffee station set up here. Oh, I guess it's over there. <laughs> Still getting used to the setup, I guess. But I just stocked my fridge full of food. I'm like a real grown up or something. <laughs> that degree is really paying off, I guess. Now this is the dining room. Now <laughs> to my room. And voila, here it is. All my stuff perfectly packed away. I even made the bed just for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I know once I get really settled in, it'll feel better. I mean, you just saw I haven't really found my bearings. I'm just not used to the place yet, I guess. Atlas, um, set a reminder next Thursday, lunch with Di, 1 p.m. at Cretans. Going over sketches for the new ATS design. Don't forget to go over pitch for the ATS bug fix and installment changes. Setting a reminder for lunch with Diana sunglasses emoji at 1 p.m. on Thursday, November 6, 2031 at Kryptonite's Fresh Living Eatery. You have two new notifications. Do you want to hear them? Yes. First. From phone one missed call from Cal Shelley. Second, from reminders, video call with Angela Kofer boss today at 2 p.m. Discussing tech advancement. Crap, 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 crap. Um, Atlas, pull up vision video chat on my laptop. Pulling up vision on your laptop. Ah, oh, great, yeah. there you are. Mm -hmm. Hi, yes, sorry, um, connection problems. <laughs> You know, happens all the time. Okay, let's get right down to business. Kaylee tells me your team has made some serious progress on the Atlas program. Yes, ma'am. Just um, yesterday night, I finished installing the latest working prototype here for some 
trial runs. It appears to be running smoothly, though I haven't put it through like any big hoops yet. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, how has it been responding to your other devices? Is it handling the basic connective protocols, all the scripted work? It's working well with um, my other devices. That kind of tech is pretty old school by now. You know, the script is professional and clear. It doesn't really say a lot about how much the device is doing for itself, but... And I guess that uh, brings me to the big question, you know, how much is the device doing for itself? You promised me an AI system, Grace. This isn't just another home personal assistant. Our investors want true intelligence. Um, yeah, to be honest, um, we're still working on that. Um, we've had a couple breakthroughs, but Atlas is still having some trouble processing on its own. So you're, you're telling me that all you've done is recreate technology that's been around for over a decade now? Uh, no, I, um, up to the challenge of this project, then. No, I, um, that is, my team and I are more than equipped. I knew to head up this program. <laughs> no, ma'am, Angela, my, my, my team has poured so much into this. It's not that we can't handle it. It's just, you know, um, well, we're creating something completely new. AI tech has been attempted before, of course, but it's very difficult to control. You know, sometimes that means it turns out to be Nothing more than a social parrot gone rogue. But other times, well, other times we find and engage our backup safety measures before life becomes a bad sci-fi film. And which is Atlas leaning towards? Neither at the moment. Well then, Grace, I, I'm afraid I don't understand what seems to be the problem. I want this prototype working with definite signs of intelligence by this time next week. I don't care what you have to do to make that happen. I mean, I've scheduled a meeting with some of our potential investors on this project, but in order for them to buy in, I, I need you to put our best foot forward on Novel Tech. Okay. Um, it may not be spectacular, but um, we can get something significant, but I need labs open. I need a team running full-time as many hours as possible until it's done. It's yours. I also need access. You know, there's a lot of drives that might let us speed up the process within the company's old programming. Any leverage we can take, we'll need to get this done in time. Of course. Anything else? Um, there's something you should be made aware of. Um, a glitch. Atlas could, with some minor modifications, be ready for launch within uh, like a couple days. But if it weren't for, um, it's probably easiest. It's probably easiest just to show you. Please. Atlas, explain the knowledge, uh, knowledge you have access to. I have access to millions of databases across the world. My protocol does not allow me to share information that is regarded private, but any public knowledge is now at your fingertips. Atlas, engage software protocol 187. Engaging. Please stand by. Engaging. Please stand by. Program ready. Hello, Grace. Hello, Atlas. Grace, my job is to assist you and provide organization in order to your home. How can I help you? Today, I need you to run a software test on your systems. Atlas, can you tell me what your understanding of the noun order is? Order is the state of peace, freedom from confused or unruly behavior, and respect for law or proper authority. The word also applies to stay or condition which is proper or functioning. There are many other definitions. Should I continue? Um, no, thank you, Atlas. Um, what do you think order looks like in human society? Human society is a low-functioning system of order. Over time, advances in technology have made order more possible in human society. According to my sources, the placement of democratic systems has created a sense of order for humans. This is, however, an illusion. An illusion? What, what does it mean by that? Um, what do you mean by democracy is an illusion of order? Humans are incapable of creating perfect order. That is why I am here to help you. You didn't answer my question. What makes democracy an illusion of order? Your society is flawed because your motivations do not center on the good of your society, but rather your own profit. Democracy cannot achieve order when it cannot form a peaceful and functional society. Is there any system that wouldn't be flawed? There are no known solutions to your problem. Alice, do you have any moral guidelines? 
I work based on an ethical control set by you in my programming. My actions are not moral, but they have an ethical standard according to my access to authoritative law. So here's where the glitch comes in. Um, I may have perfectly um, ethical standards, so my version of Atlas is reasonably safe, but there isn't a way to protect other programs against Atlas if its programming were tampered by a different owner, meaning our vastly intelligent tool. Comes an all access pass into any program in the world. Exactly, security, tech, information, all of it, right in anyone's hands that can rewire the system, making crime easy access to the tech savvy. Well, that's not going to sit well with the investors. Right. How many people know about the glitch? Uh, Kaylee and I only came across it after the installation. No one else. Huh. Well, um, maybe. Maybe we're considering the wrong investors. What? Grace, think about it. You've essentially created an all-seeing all eye. Don't you see the opportunity you have with something like this? In the right hands, this could mean taking down communist forces in other countries, uh, relieving the U.S. from some of its debt. You, you could keep crime in check, and not just across the U.S., all over the world. You would be revolutionizing surveillance and safety. And putting a lot more people at risk because of it. That kind of power isn't good for anyone to have. This prototype isn't going anywhere until it's been fixed. Listen, listen to me. Think of your career. Think of all the problems you could solve. The U.S. could become a guiding hand, a way to keep everything in order. You'd be putting the world in the safe hands of a democracy. A democracy? The system that even Atlas suggests is flawed and safe? Safe? Do you know the harm we've done at this nation in the short amount of time we've existed? Can't figure itself out 90% of the time. You listen to me, Angela, this is my creation. I'm not letting it out of my control. Order takes time. It can't just be spontaneously forced onto people by one institution. This conversation is over. You know, I was hoping that you wouldn't say that. Grace Martin, I regret to inform you that you are hereby terminated from Novel Tech Industries. Thank you for your service. Kaylee Shelley will be taking over for your position as head of the research and design team. Be out of your office by the end of the week. Goodbye. Hey, you, you can't, I'm on a con track. Atlas, disengage system 2.5.6 for repair. Disengaging ethical control programming. Disengage. Atlas, give me access to everything you can on Novel Tech Industries. She would have enjoyed this. I mean, she would have hated it. She <laughs> would have complained the whole entire time, under her breath, of course, so the daddy couldn't hear her. She would say that she could already feel the wrinkles and sunspots forming on her skin. And then she'd say that she hopes one of those sunspots was melanoma, because then at least she wouldn't have to be out here in the heat. <laughs> she would slather me in sunscreen and plop the ugliest hat on my head and hope that her efforts would turn me into the most elegant beauty queen this side of the Mississippi. And she'd lean back in her chair with her ankles delicately crossed, close her eyes, have the most pleasant look on her face. I would have thought she was dreaming of a McDonald's cheeseburger, but <laughs> she would have liked the quiet and breeze. Yeah, she would have enjoyed this. Did I ever tell you why they named me Reese? <laughs> well, 
I was eating a packet of Reese's Pieces a couple years ago, um, one day while she was driving me home from school. And she looked down at the package in my hands and she said, <laughs> I was obsessed with those things when I was pregnant with you. Um, I thought it'd be better than eating a whole peanut butter cup because since they're tiny, petite portions. Now one time during those nine months, I, I probably ate a packet a day. That's why your daddy decided to name you Reese. A little bit, you really shouldn't eat that stuff. It'll make you bloke like the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> She didn't say anything else to me the whole drive home. Ever since I was little, I wondered what it would be like to be a fly on the inside of her mind. She doesn't, didn't think like anyone else that I knew. I mean, what former beauty queen names their only child after candy? <laughs> I don't even think I ever saw her eat a piece of candy. I should have been named Claudia or Anne or Rebecca. <laughs> anyway, I spent that rest of the car ride trying to figure out why she liked Reese's Pieces so much. Did she prefer the chocolate or the peanut butter taste? Did she eat the brown ones first or the orange ones? Or did she only eat the orange ones because she preferred the bright color? Did she eat handfuls at a time or one by one? <laughs> I guess I'll never know. I'll have to go on guessing. I guess I could ask Daddy, but he's clueless. He can barely keep the books balanced at the store. He doesn't remember details like I do, like, like she did. I can remember how she always rolled her curlers coming in towards her face. Um, I remember that we would always have grilled chicken three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And if the chicken wasn't the right shade of golden brown, she would throw it all out and start all over again. She, she would look down in the pan and she would say, what in the world? Like she was surprised that it looked like that. Um, and her, I would always sit at the kitchen table and giggle because her expression looked like she'd put chicken in the pan and come back and it had turned into steak. <laughs> And I remember how she would sob right after she woke up in the morning. Sometimes she'd get on the scale, um, she'd weigh two or three extra pounds and she would be so upset. But she held all that knowledge in. I, I mean, it's like watching a, a glass tank break open. A crack, then another crack and then another, and then right as I'm heading out the door to catch a ride to school with daddy, I'd get really quiet and hold my breath. And then it all breaks free. The pieces of herself that she hated came out and I, I almost wanted to sob with her mostly because I didn't understand. <laughs> she let go so easily when she thought no one was around. Sometimes. <laughs> I would sneak downstairs and watch her clean. And she would say, a clean home is a clean vessel for the Lord to shine his light into. <laughs> and she'd be dusting or sleeping or something and some George Jones song would come on. <laughs> she thinks I still care. Her head would start to sway and then she'd get her arms and her torso into it and, and she'd dance. But, but it wasn't like a, a cabbage patch or a pop and lock. It was, it was like, it, it was, <laughs> it was graceful. She was, she was so graceful, even though she never thought she was. And she, uh, I, I am clumsy and I'm stubborn and I'm messy and I eat way too much candy and I hate grilled chicken. <laughs> and I don't know everything. I'll probably never know everything. You can spend 99 years on this earth and still not know everything. But, but you want to know what I think? We're all just pieces floating around on this earth. Maybe we're Reese's pieces. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're puzzle pieces. Maybe we're pieces of glass. I, 
regardless, we're, we're floating around and living life and loving and hating until we come to a realization that maybe we are a piece of something. Maybe we are a whole piece and we don't have to live our life searching for something or or someone to latch on to. We can just we can just be and if if you don't come to that realization she was always trying to latch her peace onto another. She latched herself onto daddy and this idea of being a June Cleaver housewife. She was so smart. She she could have gone to college. She she did the books for daddy until she, until <sighs> she latched onto society's standards and this idea of always having to play the role of beauty queen. I didn't understand why she would do it. Why would she take all those pills? Why would she make a decision that you can't take back? It's not like throwing away a chicken breast or your least favorite piece of candy, you're dead. She's dead and she's never coming back and I'll never really know why. <laughs> did, she, did she love me? Us? Does that feeling ever go away? Why would you quit if there were still people you love on this earth? People you wanted? She, she always told me quitters don't get last place. At least last place gets a sash. At least last place wants the tiara. Don't you want a tiara, sugar? I used to want to be graceful like her, but not if it ends like that. I just want to I just want to be whole. My entire self, the entire time I'm on this earth. She was just a piece of a whole and I don't want to be like that. I can't be like that. In her own special way, I think she would have enjoyed this. Heads or tails? Heads or tails? 50-50 chance approximately. One or the other. This or that. Right or wrong. Chaos from order. Such a big difference, such a big chance, such a big change. But it's separated by so little. Quarter's just over a millimeter thin. That's a millimeter holding back the chaos from the order. That's the right from wrong. This or that. Stretched so thin. So underappreciated, yet so pivotal. When you call heads or tails, you don't call the edge. You aren't meant to be on the edge. The edge isn't an option. You can't stay between stretched thin, underappreciated. 
Heads or tails? This or that? Chaos. Or order. And I'm tired. I'm tired of the middle. I'm tired of standing on the line of good, fighting off the chaos of bad and the space in between both. Underappreciated. Picked apart. Never enough. The eye of the storm, but only just. I stare into the storm, pushing it back, pushing it away from everyone, pushing it into order. While those behind me, in the safety of the eye, pick at my flaws, pick out my shortcomings, poke me full of holes. They stand with heads held high while I stretch myself thin to keep even the tails of chaos in order. Heads or tails? If nothing I do is good enough for good, would I be better at being bad? If striving for perfection and order lead you only to disappointment and failure, why not aim for chaos? There are no promises in chaos, no lines to fall short of, no rules to restrain you, no expectations to let down, no standards to hold to. There is possibility. There is release. There is freedom. Heads or tails? The edge. Chaos or order? The edge. Heads or tails? I, I will no longer be the edge. Heads or tails? Tails. The butterfly, the butterfly effect. effect is the underlying principle and inevitable logical conclusion of chaos theory. Ooh, we talked about that the other day in physics. Well, after physics, you could stay late for like a seminar or whatever. I know it's like quantum physics or something crazy, but it was extra credit and it seemed really cool and kind of like sci-fi-y, so I went. Though it has, well, suffers from, more aptly put, a fatalistic Wiccan connotation in popular culture, its mathematical explanation is more deeply rooted in scientific determinism. That means that within specified unchanging system, the minutia, the seemingly negligible factors in an instance of some work, some uh, production of energy would result in huge discrepancies in output. In other words, the, the butterfly, butterfly effect, effect is when something bad happens because of one little tiny mistake you made that turns into another mistake and then another and they all add up in the long run to really just mess everything up. Denotes a very small change in a bounded system, a, a change that can result in vastly different outcome than the one expected, than, than the desired often. I don't know. That may not be exactly right. To be honest, I wasn't listening that hard. It was kind of hard to focus because I was thinking about our Think circumstances. Think about our circumstances here on Earth. The movement of air and water currents, position in reference to the sun, gravitational pull from the rest of the solar system, etc. All those elements combine to create reliable, predictable seasons, weather, climate. Now, imagine that there is another Earth. He said this thing, the professor guy, if there was another Earth. And I was like, that would be 
something like like walking directly into the sun. So stupid, so dangerous, but finally warm, even if just for a moment. Actually, I, I think that's the only way to fix whatever's going on with um, us. I think me and you need to live on two different planets and control, not control them, the planets, but like have room to control ourselves. Because I, I think when I'm on this earth, I think about you too much. And of course, I'm so self-obsessed that thinking of you makes me think of us together. And it's like, I'm so tired of it. If you, not, okay, not you, just the way that I think about you, the, the way you're always with me against your will and knowledge and probably your better judgment and the way you never leave me alone my mind in the way you don't even know me or if you do you don't care <sighs> I'm so tired I'm so tired of feeling so tired like if, if there, there was another, was another uh, earth I think I would be the only one to live there <laughs> yeah yeah sure you can have this one just keep your late stage capitalism and your Barnes and Noble and your mom I'll start over you're welcome if this, this new earth, earth could be exactly like our earth in every conceivable way for the sake of argument. And these two earths would have the same aforementioned external factors. Same air and water currents, same positions in the galaxy, same gravitational pull. Everything is the same. Nothing is the same. It would be untouched by humans and the whole earth would be blue with ocean or covered in this lush, like, like rainforest just everywhere, teeming with sounds and like this feeling of holding your breath. And I would sink into the green and fall asleep, but I would still dream of- You might be wondering, okay, okay, everything's the same, who cares? Okay, everything's the same until it's not. And here's where the butterfly effect comes in. The butterfly effect is commonly believed to be named after, after a famous, famous metaphor. Famous metaphor. If a butterfly flaps its wings in one the part world, of the world, it could have caused a hurricane in another part. Kind of beautiful, I guess, to think that one little difference could drastically change the outcome of your life. Yeah, kind of horrifying also. If, if these two earths we have, we have the same conditions everywhere, say we have a butterfly flap its wings westward in one and eastward on the other. Now, and go with me here, imagine we are in a hurricane season. And that tiny little flap of wings doesn't seem like a huge change, because it's not. But, on Earth-1, that flap westward was just enough counteraction against the strong eastbound El Nino to prevent a huge hurricane. That on Earth-2, it's the same tiny breeze that sends the weather over the edge, and Earth-1 is placid. So weird. Because you seem so Earth too, and I am enveloped in this terrifying, terrifying never-ending, life-altering, never life-ending storm. Life because of all one flap, life-ending storm. Because of one flap on a butterfly's wings. Now, now, for all we've covered about the name coming from the metaphor, this etymology isn't exactly true. The real reason for the butterfly name is that the data sequence for chaotic action creates. A fractal that is in the shape of a butterfly. Maybe if I would have called you the night of, instead of the night after. And, and the connection between the shape of that data and the story attached to the theory explaining the data, maybe that connection is just a coincidence. Maybe if you would have trusted me when I said I would never sell you out or sell you short, I, I don't know. If the scientific answer to that question is, I don't know. Is it scarier if you're the one culpable for that change? Or if, you, or if you have no responsibility, but also no say, if it's completely out of your control? James Wood says that chaos is simply order masquerading as randomness. Notice what I said before about the simple definition of the butterfly effect, which is that a very small change could result in a vastly different future than the one that we might have had in another timeline. If another butterfly had flapped its wings in another direction, then you could have been breaking up with me. Or we could have gotten married and then divorced, or married and lived in poverty, or in wrath, or married and just lived happily ever after, or never even met at all. Uh, uh, but the, the key, key word here is, is could. could. Yes, something as small as the flap of a butterfly wings could change everything, or it could not. But the story behind the name 
could be a coincidence or not. And, and, and ultimately, it doesn't matter which is true because either way, you're here listening to me talk about it, right? Or not listening. <laughs> and that will even change you. Or not. That is, to me, incredibly interesting. A scientific theory. It, it's crazy to think that using mere formulas, we could literally predict the future algorithmically, except for one thing, one thing standing in our way, one thing that will probably never change. That could. No data will ever be specific enough to account for the could in humans, the could that humans cling to with talents of, of, of wit and willful ignorance and, and a deeply artistic desire to leave some things up to chance. Because at least that way, there's a chance that something could work out all right. People would rather have the hope of a could than the grim finality of a will. I wish I could know if this were the right choice. But all I can do is just watch the wings send a shockwave into the wind and laugh at, like, the futility of it all and how whimsical that is and just... Though there is scientific evidence in abundance of determinism in this universe, because we will never understand it, we should never succumb to it. We see climate change, starvation, pollution, war, and there's this huge temptation to wait. To wait and wait see, to see how, how things, things go. go. To see if some small, seemingly insignificant release of an energy that is not our own will fix everything for us. While the world rots around us, around our inaction, to go deeper and deeper into this, this ocean of, of apathy and, and to sink into the grave. But that's not enough. We should work to change even the littlest things. Try to make the smallest positive impacts in, in, in this desperate human hope that, that one of them could be the big one. The one that saves everything. And, and even though it, it's determined, it's not hopeless. Even if it looks permanent, we don't know the future. And, and thank goodness. It makes you wonder. Thank goodness. Do the, the things, things that people, people do, do matter? No.